Today we will talk about the story of illustration, or we say the history of illustration. In terms of the illustration itself, much of the history comes from the original petroglyphs or rock paintings. Human paintings began in prehistoric Paleolithic, as we can verify from the vast quantities of precious petroglyphs left behind. The piece we see now is Altamira cave painting in Spain. We can see a very vivid, very graphic, and powerful image of a bowl. Shape of this bowl is already very graphic in the present language. The grasp of these lines is already very intense. In addition, the purity as well as the use of colors is already very decorative. From this work, we can see that human has begun to find a sense of art. Between the symbols and the intention, as China is a country with a long history and the richness of petroglyphs, it is difficult to trace the exact time of its origin. Some experts have dated it to twenty thousand to forty thousand years ago. Cave painting is widely found in the grasslands, Gobi Desert, and. Areas of China where ethnic minorities gather, and it is an important part of grassland culture. You can also see this in some of the works. I mean, in petroglyphs. We are now looking at two works. One is a rock painting of Mount Gelan, and the other is of Mount Yin. Both of them show hunting, nomadism, song and dance, religion, war and myths, and legends. People's lives are mainly nomadic or hunting. The reflections in their painting are all about their lives, and they are documenting their lives in such a way. We can say that our illustration is to transcend words through images, or rather, to record in the form of graphics and tell stories. This can already be clearly seen in the Chinese works of the same period. So when it comes to the original illustration, it goes back to the frescoes of Dunhuang in China. Dunhuang mirrors are unique because of their enormous size, and they have an art form which tells stories in terms of graphics and a mixture of graphics and text. The mural include the Mo Gao Grottoes, the Thousand Buddha Cave, and the Anxi Yuling Stone Kiln, with a total of five hundred and fifty-two paintings. It is over fifty thousand square meters of murals from all generations. It is one of the largest groups of stone kilns in China and the world, and is a very rich in canon and a major part of Dunhuang art. We can see from its volume and its painting technique that is already very skilled. The painting of this period in Dunhuang are mainly of gods. People depicting images of gods, as in the art of other religions, they describe images and are activities of gods, or the relationship between gods or between gods and people. It is an art that pacifies people's hearts with a desire for goodness. So we can say that this religious style of art will have a completely different character from our kind of secular painting. The Dunhuang murals we see now. Are both rich in color and in the language of the graphics. The pictures are very coherent too. The treatment of the Buddhist form, of all the facial features, and of the characters' traits all has their own artistic language. It is truly a classic.